Hello, hello, my name is Marsha Nuts and today I wanna to show you how to make these shaped key rings. Before I start, I wanna quickly give credit where credit is due. I am 100% basing my video tutorial off of Claire's photo tutorial. Claire is an amazing bracelet maker who you can find on Instagram and on Bracelet Book where she occasionally shares tutorials. I don't believe that this is her original creation but I am basing my tutorial off of hers with permission of course. So I definitely want to give her some credit and you should definitely check her out because she makes amazing bracelets. But that being said, let's talk a little bit about this keychain before I get into explaining how to actually make it. This keychain uses a D-shaped swivel keyring, as you can see. It also looks like this at the back. Some people attach like fabric or something at the back to cover it. I don't personally mind. But you can find these keyrings pretty much in any craft store. I got mine on Amazon and they come in all sorts of different sizes. Before I start, I also want to mention that this isn't a beginner tutorial. If you're new to bracelets, I probably wouldn't recommend starting with keychains right away. Maybe get a little bit more experience with some other bracelets, specifically if you're making alphas as well. Maybe try some alphas just in general before you try keychains. And because I'm not expecting beginners to watch this, I am gonna be going a little bit faster in this video without explaining the absolute details. But if you do need some extra help, my beginner's guide, my basic knots, my alpha tutorials are all going to be linked in the description. Those are all a good place to start your bracelet journey before graduating to some more difficult stuff. All right, all that being said, let's actually jump into this tutorial. All right, so I'm using the same pattern that Claire used in her tutorial and I'll be leaving the link to the pattern in the description as I always do. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna determine how many knots you can fit on the first row. So how many strings essentially fit on this bar? And this is individual and it depends on the size of the keyring that you have, the size of the string that you have, the size of the knots that you make, etc. And my case is the same as Claire's, I can fit 14 knots on the first bar here. So now it's time to do a little bit of math. I'm sorry. My pattern has 20 knots in the first row, but I can only fit 14. That means there's going to be six left over, 20 minus 14. I have two sides that I can fit the extra knots on, so six divided by two equals three three on each side. But I can't just add three strings on the left or three strings on the right because that's an odd number and I need to fold strings in order to attach them. If I did have an even number of knots, so say I had four instead of three, I can just skip this step and actually do four because you fold two strings and that creates four strings. But since I came out with three, I need to do a bit of an extra step. So I can fit 14 on the bar right? Let's subtract two. So I can add one string on the left and one string on the right, making four instead of three knots that I'm going to add. That makes it an even number and I can fold the strings off to the side. And then in the middle, instead of 14, we're gonna have 12 since we subtracted two strings. Right, so I need to attach 12 strings onto the bar now, and then we're gonna add four strings either side later on to make 20 in total. 12 divided by two equals six, and that means we're gonna have six pairs of string attached to the bar here. Now we're gonna be attaching the string by using a lark's head knot. I'll demonstrate here, but if you need a more in-depth tutorial, I have that covered in my basic knots tutorial, which will be linked in the card and in the description as always. So you're gonna cut your base strings to be about 40 centimeters. You can do a little bit less, but I like to have a little bit of that extra string to just grip onto as I'm making the keychain. So 40 centimeters, fold that in half, take the top of that loop, put it behind your keyring, thread it through the loop of the keyring, then grab the string loop, make it a little bit wider, and through that, grab the ends and pull them through that string loop and then just tighten it. And there you go, that's a lark's head knot and that's how you attach string onto the key ring. Right, so six pairs, I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, so now I have six pairs of string, so 12 strings attached to my keychain. As we've already determined, I need to add four strings on the left and four strings on the right. I'm gonna start with the left because I like to start my first row going from left to right. So let me demonstrate quickly how I'm gonna attach four strings. You're gonna cut two more strings the same length as you did these, since they're also going to be base strings and we're also going to be folding them. So take two of the strings that you just cut, put the ends through underneath the key ring, and then just sort of loop them through. You're not securing them to the key ring, you're just looping them through so that they're like this. 
looped through. Make sure that the ends meet so that you know that this is the midpoint and they're not attached, they are just looped through at this point. All right, so take your leading string, whatever color you're using for your leading string, make it however long you want because you're gonna be replacing it as you make the bracelet anyway. And just tape it down to the table, I guess, or secure it however you wanna secure it. I prefer tape. This is also the point at which you're gonna be securing the keychain to the table. I like to use tape, but I'm also gonna thread through some extra strings that I have. It's from previous bracelets, it's scraps. And I just thread that through and then fan that out so I can have some extra grip. All right, so here we go. We've got the 12 strings that are attached via Lark's head knot. We've got these two strings that are folded, or four strings if you count them as separate strings, that are just threaded through. They're not actually attached yet. And we've got a leading string pinned at the back that's also not attached to the bracelet yet. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the leading string and you're gonna do a backward forward knot onto this entire bundle. So in total, there's four strings here. Do a backward forward knot onto that entire bundle. If you don't know how to make basic knots, I have a tutorial for you that is already linked in the card and in the description. So I'm not demonstrating how to actually make the knots here. Now that that is done, make your first row. Make all the individual knots, forward knots, on each of these individual strings. All right, so now that your leading string has gotten to the edge, you're gonna do the same thing that we did on the left side. Grab the two extra strings that you cut and then thread them through the loop of the keyring. Right, so make sure that the ends meet so you know that you've got the middle of the string. All of my ends meet here. And then taking the leading string, you're gonna do the same thing we did on the left, but now on the right. We're gonna do a forward backward knot with the leading string onto all four of these strings at the same time. So on all four of them together, there we go. All right, so your first row is done. So now the way that we're going to be bringing out strings and widening the bracelet to become 20 knots wide is basically gonna be the same thing that we do when we make triangle ends. So if you're familiar with that technique, you'll be able to get this quite quickly. If not, and if you're curious about that technique as well, obviously I will be describing everything here, but that is also a fun way to make bracelets, not key rings, then I'll leave that linked in the card and in the description. I've got two videos on that, the basic technique and then some more explanation on that. I'll link both of them. So yeah, it is pretty similar. We just made a forward backward knot onto four strings here. This time on the next row, we're gonna bring one string out. So take one string from the bundle, separate that, and now make a forward backward knot on the three strings that are left, excluding the one that we took out. And now continue making the second row as normal with this string, the one that we just took out, now being part of the separate strings that you're gonna make individual knots onto. Now the second row is where you're also gonna start following your pattern, so you're gonna have more than one leading string if you're gonna be changing colors. I have a black and a white that's added in this row, so I'm gonna do my second row according to my pattern, and then once we get to the end, I'll show you what to do there. It helps to annotate your pattern before you actually start following it. I'll use the image that Claire made for her tutorial. See how she did these lines? So just focus on the first row. We've got 14 knots in the middle between the two red lines and then three knots on the left, three knots on the right. That's exactly what we did here. So if you're doing a different pattern, it can also help to annotate that to have a visual idea of what knots you're going to be making and what knots you're gonna be excluding because of the shaped pattern. This forward backward knot that we did, by the way, that counts as a knot. So looking at my pattern for the second row, I need to make four backward knots with the blue. That forward backward knot that we did on the edge would be counted as one of them. All right, so now I'm gonna go off camera. All right, so now that we're on the end, I need to make four blue knots at the end. So once again, we've already done two on the individual strings. We've got the four strings that we did the backward forward knot in the previous row on. Take one out, similarly to how we did at that side. Make an individual knot on that one that we just took out and then make a backward forward knot on the three as a bundle. And there you go, this row now has two more strings. That first row was 14 knots wide, this row 16 knots wide. Next row you're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna have 18 knots, and then the fourth row is gonna have 20 knots wide. 
So you're gonna be bringing out one string from the bundle for each row. So now we have three, we bring out one string from the bundle, we do a backward forward knot on the two that are left, and then treat the one that we took out as an individual base string, similarly to how we do the other ones. Do this row according to your pattern, and then at the edge where we've got the three strings that we did a bundle knot on, we do the same thing. We take one out, treat it as an individual string, and do a forward backward knot on the two together. That way we get 18 knots in this row. And then for the next row after that, we're gonna have 20. We just separate the two remaining strings, and that's how you widen the bracelet. So do that, make your bracelet according to the pattern, and then I'll get back to you once you actually want to start closing off the design, which you also should annotate on your pattern to determine what row you want to do that on for your specific pattern. All right, so now I'm at the point of my pattern where I need to start bringing the strings back in. All right, so my leading string is on the right side. So I'm going to take the rightmost string and the string next to it, and I'm gonna do a forward backward knot onto both of these strings at the same time, bringing those strings into the center. I'm then going to do my row as normal until the two last strings, which I'm going to separate for now. All right, so I'm at the left edge now, and I've got two strings, the two edge strings, and I'm going to do a backward forward knot with the leading string onto both of these strings at the same time. Once again, I'm trying to bring those strings in. And I'm going to continue doing that every single row. I'm going to bring in an extra string. So I just did a backward forward knot on two, I'm gonna bring in another one, and that's gonna be three. And I'm gonna do that until I've run out of the pattern to do, or until, you know, I've got four strings in the bundle, like we started out with four strings. So it's gonna be the same point. I'm gonna have four strings in the bundle at the same time that I finish the pattern. So you're gonna continue doing that, following your pattern, bringing in a string into the bundle at each edge for each row. So I'm bringing in three now. Then at the edge, we've already got two in the bundle. I'm gonna bring in another one, and then it's gonna be four for the next row. So I'm gonna finish up my design and then I'll get back to you. All right, so at this point, the design is finished and you can end your keychain however you would normally end your keychain. I'm going to follow the rest of Claire's tutorial in which she shows you how to end the keychain the way that she does. In the tutorial that she did, she does the tutorial sort of upside down. That way the knots are on the other side, but I'm just gonna flip the keychain and then do them right side up. So literally just flip it over like that. All right, so clean up the extra string that you don't need anymore. So you've got the bundle on the left and the string on the left. Make a backward knot with that onto the bundle. Grab the next string and make a backward knot onto the entire bundle, now containing that string that we just did a knot with. And then again. And you want to make sure that you've got the same amount of strings on the left and on the right, so we just did three. So separate all those strings, leave two in the middle. And on the left side, we do backward knots. And on the right side, we do forward knots. Let's go to the right side, take the bundle on the right, grab the string next to it, do a forward knot. Then grab the next string, do a forward knot on the entire bundle and so on until there's only two strings left in the middle. All right, now that there are two strings left in the middle and we've got our two bundles, we're gonna make square knots. If you don't know how to do square knots, there are plenty of tutorials on the internet. I have a more in-depth tutorial on square knots in my butterfly-shaped bracelet tutorial, so I'm just gonna go a little bit quicker here and just quickly explain what they are. The string on the left goes over the bundle, but under this string. The string on the right goes under the bundle and through this loop here, and then you just tighten it by pulling it in either direction. Then the string on the right goes over the bundle, but under this string, like so. And the string on the left goes under the bundle, under and through this loop, like so. And then you pull it together. This string over the bundle, under this string, this string under the bundle, under the loop and through the loop, and then tied. This string on the right, over the bundle, under this string. The string on the left, under the bundle, under the loop, and through the loop, and then tied. And at this point, you can cut your strings off to the length that you want. 
And there you go, your keychain is complete. There is a way to do this with odd numbers of bass strings as well, but I'm gonna leave it up to you to look at Claire's tutorial to figure out how to make those, since I'm not making a keychain with an odd number of strings in my tutorial. I'll leave her tutorial linked in the description so you can check it out, and you should definitely also check her out on Instagram, because she makes some amazing bracelets. But there you go, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Let me know if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, I'll try to answer as many as I can. For anyone curious, this is what the backside looks like. I know that a lot of people sew patches on the back to make them look cleaner. I personally don't really mind. I'm just gonna leave it as is because I quite like it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Before I go, I wanna give a special shout out to my patrons and especially my top supporters whose names are gonna appear on screen. Thank you guys so much for your support. It is with your support that I'm able to continue doing this channel and I very much appreciate it. If you also wanna become a patron, there is a link in the description where you can sign up and get exclusive perks for your donations. But in any case, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.